this is, this is, this is. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast, Mike Herrera Podcast. I'm your host, that's right, Mike Herrera. Uh, The weather is getting a little chilly out. Um, I've been holding on to the sunny days. If it's sunny, I've been trying to play tennis, I've been trying to get active and be outside. But let's face it, it's happening. Um, We're heading into winter. If you're in the the northern hemisphere, as we are up here in Bremerton, Washington, uh, it, it is going into the fall. We're in, we're fall. We're into fall. I don't know what to tell you. I I was in denial, literally going into this podcast, and I I realize that now. Now that I'm talking to you, so uh, thanks for listening. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you want to get crazy, you can rate and review on I think Spotify, on Apple, on Google, on anything like that. Whatever it is you might be inclined to do uh, would be amazing. Um, the podcast is sort of a little island out here. It's part of MXPX, but it's not. You know, it's like it's like we're our, we're our own outpost. So um, thank you. But to support the podcast, MXPX.com. To support the podcast, listen to MXPX. To support the podcast, buy MXPX tickets. Buy, you know, the vinyl. Any of that supports MXPX and supports, of course, this podcast. This is a, an extension but I do sometimes feel like we're a little island out here. If you guys want to submit to the the show, uh, if you're in a band or have a band or your best friends in a band and you got to have people hear their best song, please submit it to the My Career Podcast Facebook group. It's on Facebook, and uh, you can just ask to join. It's free, of course, and, and just be part of that. Um, and then put your YouTube link with your little blurb about your band right there uh, on you know in the group. And people can check it out, and of course, um, we'll when I get a, a few stacked up, I'll put them on the show. So, um, and as same goes for voicemails, you can just call in anytime. I, I suggest call in when something's on your mind, when you hear something. Maybe you're listening to the podcast and something strikes you, or a question about something. Most people ask questions about MXPX, but people go outside of that and they ask questions about life, or about other bands, or about what it was like to do this or that or whatever. But um, anything goes. The number is 360-830-6660. Leave a voicemail, and uh, I'll play it on the show and, and talk about it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the new album. Find A Way Home is out everywhere right now. You can get vinyl, like I just said, mxpx.com. You can get vinyl and all that. Uh, we just announced a bunch of shows, uh, and they just went on sale last Friday. So if you're hearing this when the podcast comes out Monday, it's only been a weekend Thank you, everybody that's bought tickets so far. Um, I, I imagine it's been great. <laughs> it's been amazing. Uh, we This weekend, Saturday and Sunday, October 21 and 22, MXPX is going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada for When We Were a Young Fest. And then um, pretty much right after that, we, we travel. We, we'll, we'll come home and turn around and, and get on a plane and head to, to Indonesia. We head to Bali. Indonesia or yeah Bali Indonesia on the 27th that's um I think that's Friday and then Jakarta on Saturday the 28th and then Makassar on Sunday the 29th um I hope I'm not wrong I hope it's I mean whatever it's it's the 27th 28th and 29th I assume that that's a Friday Saturday Sunday um let's go it's gonna be so much traveling in a very short amount of time and Yes, I know we're going to be tired, but <laughs> we're looking forward to all of those shows. So shout out to Indonesia. We love our fans in Indonesia. We love uh, playing for you guys. You guys go crazy. You guys uh, here in, in the Western regions, um, we love playing here too because we, uh, we have a bunch of shows that just went on sale for the Ataris. So, But before I get to all those dates, let me just go in order so it's not as confusing. Next up, we get home. Um, I'm doing some Goldfinger shows here and there. I don't even know the dates for them. So if you're interested in that, check that out on your own. Um, and then and then the show box. The show box in Seattle, Washington. We're kicking off our very last show of the year in Seattle. That's going to be December 30th. That's a Saturday night. Come on out. Tickets are almost gone. We're really trying hard to keep the bots away from buying up all the tickets. And so, like, some of the tickets get bought, and if they're bought by a bot, B-O-T, a robot, then 
we try to get those tickets put back into the pool. So it's like so close to selling out, but it's also not sold out. So go get those tickets. Uh, December 30th, the show box with our good friends, Diesel Boy. They're doing shows again. They were just playing in, I think they're in Arizona this weekend, or maybe it's the last weekend. But either way, uh, so happy to see them out there, out into the world, playing, playing the songs off their new record, all of that. So um, it's going to be good. Showbox, MXPX. We're playing the full set. Can't wait for it. And then our first show of the year, the Palladium, the Hollywood Palladium in Los Angeles, California, January 6th. That's a Saturday night. Come out and see MXPX. We're going to be with our good friends, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. Okay? Tickets are on sale. Still going. Uh, don't wait because it's going to get thinner and thinner. Don't want you, to, don't want you guys to miss out. But uh, come out and see us. That's going to be the show of the century in Los Angeles if you're over there. If you're not there and you can't make it there and you're somewhere maybe on the East Coast, we are coming to New York City. Coming back. I know uh, people have been asking for it for a while. So MXPX in the Ataris at Webster Hall on New uh, on February 9th. That's my daughter's birthday. So chances are she, she may be in the audience because I don't want to miss my daughter's birthday. It's kind of a rule I have. Um, and then that's in New York City. Tickets are on sale right now. MXPX in the Ataris. And then the next day, that's a, Saturday, uh, that's a Friday night. And then Saturday night, February 10th, at Union Transfer in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So a little nice weekend there. It's going to be awesome. Tickets on sale right now. Um, and then going into March, March 15th, Buckhead Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. MXPX in the Ataris on sale right now. That's a Friday night. And then Saturday night in Orlando, Florida, March 16th, uh, House of Blues, Orlando with MXPX in the Ataris on sale now. Both those weekends on sale uh and our very last weekend we have right now to tell you about is uh the ogden theater with five iron frenzy and the ataris in denver colorado that's gonna be april 5th i think march april yeah april 5th i'm just trying to read of course i don't have i don't wear glasses but i probably need them uh <laughs> april 5th and that's a friday night Going to be awesome. Ogden Theater. Um, we've played there a bunch of times. But we haven't played there in a while. So uh, moving to that, and it's going to be great. We've always had really good shows there. I think we played there with Blink um, a long time ago, too, back in, this, back in them days, the 90s, the late 90s. Um, but Five Iron Frenzy is just on for that show. And then we move on to Saturday night, uh, April 6th, in Salt Lake City finally making up our date that we had to cancel during covid salt lake city utah at the depot mxpx in the ataris tickets on sale right now thank you so much um can't wait i'm not going to salt lake city i'm not so for those that don't know we covered a song by the dwarves called i'm not going to salt lake city slc and it's definitely worth checking out I mean, if you haven't already checked out our new album, I would check that out first. But <laughs> that that song is is fun. And I heard that the dwarves were actually playing Salt Lake City. And I don't know if it's happened yet, but I saw a, an advertisement for it. And I was like, no way. No way they're playing Salt Lake City. So if you're a fan of the dwarves, go see them in Salt Lake City as well. Go check out when they're playing. All right, you guys, mxpeaks.com for all those tickets and all the links to the tickets to find out where to go. But don't wait because these shows are going to do well. Uh, people are already buying tickets right now, and, and it's moving. So uh, appreciate you guys. Let's move on. Let's get to your voicemails. Let's talk about what you want to talk about, and, um, and we'll go from there. Um, I know I had a bunch of things I wanted to say aside from this show stuff, but all I can say is thank you, everybody. Check out... Our YouTube, MXPX YouTube, every Monday we're releasing a brand new music video. And I don't want to say which video this is going to be just in case it's not the video that I think it's going to be because that video that I think it's going to be technically is not has not been delivered yet, is not done yet. It's close. Don't get me wrong. All things are close. But that's how we live our lives here at the punk rock store. <laughs> <laughs> the punk rock store. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but we, we live, uh, you know, this punk rock lifestyle and, and um, a lot of times things happen 
just in the nick of time, just last minute. But it's not it's not because we don't it's not because we're lazy. It's because we're doing so many things. It's like I'm doing everything I can to get this done before it needs to be done. And then I'm going to get everything I can done before that needs to get done. Like that's what's happening here. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Just we're all busy and we're getting this done just in the nick of time. And and I kind of like that in a lot of ways. Uh, it's it makes things more fresh. When when I finish a promo edit and we put it out, it feels fresh because we liter- I literally just got it finished and I probably had to fix something and and re-upload it to Dropbox or whatever. So anyway, uh let, let's get to your voicemails. <laughs> Enough about about my craziness um, and my days. Let's get to you. Let's get to you asking questions again about me, I guess, probably. But um, I appreciate you guys. And, and again, that number, if you want to call in and leave a message about a song, about a, a show, a tour, an experience you had recently or a long time ago, anything non-music or non-MXP related, just life related, that's cool, too. Whatever you want to do. The number is 360-830-6660. It's a U.S. number, United States number, and you'll just leave a voicemail, and I'll play it on the show like this. Let's uh, let's hear our first guest. Hey, Mike. It's Jordan from West Virginia again. Uh, I know there a while back you were always posting videos making breakfast burritos. I just want to know what is in... A Mike Herrera signature breakfast burrito. What kind of meat? You put guac in that thing. And the most important part, the hot sauce. What kind of hot sauce are you putting on that bad boy? Let me know. Later. Okay. Uh, Great question. I've talked about this a little bit, but I'll talk about it again because this topic uh, never gets old to me. Um, I had burrito today. I had, I had burritos, and, and I'll tell you, tell you about it right now. So first and foremost, the burritos are made with raw tortillas. So you can get raw tortillas that are refrigerated at some grocery stores, not all. So you have to find the right ones, and not all brands are the same. Um, and that being said, I think, I think we get ours at – sometimes we get them at Costco, um, but – they used to have them at Safeway. I mean, there's different grocery stores, but just get raw tortillas. Find ones you like and find ones that don't fall apart when you try to pull them apart to put them on the hot plate. And then from there, you put them on the hot plate. You make your tortilla and you ha- you fill it with egg, just scrambled eggs and breakfast sausage. But the breakfast sausage for me is very important which kind I get. I get the kind that has no nitrates. It has no none of the chemicals and none of the the things that cause cancer, um, or at least that's what it says on the package. So I get the I get what's called Jimmy Dean Natural. That's the most um, store like big brand label that I can think of that we use. Sometimes we'll use like a like a uh, uh, shoot. I mean like. A smaller brand like if we find something but most of the time it's jimmy dean natural natural is important because it doesn't have any any like kind of like flavoring to it it doesn't have anything like that it's just it's just the meat and it doesn't have the nitrates and all that stuff but um anyway heb if you're in texas would have would have some good stuff too the heb brand usually is decent but you have to still get natural get natural um, okay, that's the meat. Get eggs, meat, and and then I'll get um, green peppers, diced green peppers, just like a can about this big, <laughs> a little can. So like half a can, half a like a small can, not a um, not a giant can, but I'll put a a full small can of that into into you know I don't, I would say twenty eggs. Let's just say about 20 eggs and then half of the tube of, of sausage. That's it. That's, that's what's in the burrito. Uh, and then, sorry, I missed something. Shredded cheese. A little bit of shredded cheese. I would say a cheddar, a Mexican taco style cheese, anything like that. Just a little sprinkle on each burrito as you roll it up. So you put your, you put your, um, your meat, 
you cook that up and then you put your eggs in that same pan and cook it up with the meat and then that's with the green peppers and then that all goes filling goes into the tortilla and then on top of that is your sprinkle of cheese and then that's rolled up that's it and then from there every day a la carte i make my own side toppings which is you know if you have the ingredients i mean number one for me is like cilantro cilantro and hot sauce if you don't have anything else from there i would add uh fresco uh, queso fresco cheese which is just like a cheese that um i'll keep it i'll keep it i'll get a big wheel of it and i'll freeze it put it in the freezer and then i have and i have them cut before i put it in the freezer by the way you don't want to make that mistake so you only take out a chunk of it put it in your container and that goes in your fridge every day and you've got ch chunks of queso fresco you can just pull off but then when you get rid of that you can pull out your frozen one put it in you don't have to go to the store and 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 go constantly um cilantro you can grow it yourself i try a little bit uh usually i use a lot so i'm, I'm not growing enough but uh i get it. it's really cheap from the store you can get it for like less than a dollar usually like 90 93 cents or something like that for a little bushel okay and then uh little mini tomatoes or big tomatoes if you want to cut them up. But I, I usually like the mini tomatoes, the cherry tomatoes, so that I can just dice up a couple. And I've got tomatoes without wasting any extras. Um, and then half of an avocado a day, usually. Um, I'll just fresh avocado it right, ch ch chop it up, boom, boom, boom. So it's avocado, but it's it, it's guacamole, but it's not guacamole because I'm, I'm not putting salt and pepper on it. I'm not putting all the things you would put in a in guacamole i'm just putting straight up avocado but that mixed with the cilantro and the tomato and the queso fresco is great and then from there ch -ch -ch -ch, hot sauce you know whether it's uh one of my favorites is hop singers they're an east coast boutique label uh and they make kind of like fun stuff and they make some mxpx labeled uh hot sauce some they actually even made uh my carrera podcast hot sauce and sent it to me so I should see if they could send some more and, and, and I could put it up. Uh, anyway, uh, the hot sauce, you know, Liquid Cartoon from California is awesome hot sauce. Uh, their flavors are so great. Um, I would say, I would say between those two, um, Liquid Cartoon has, a, has some more interesting flavors, but is more a mild, like it's not as hot. And then Hopzingers is like, the hot type I love, like it, it's got, they've got different types of hot sauces, but they're all bearable to me. They're not like hot sauces you do just to like see if you can handle it. You know, they're actually meant for tasting. Um, and then another honorable mention is, um, is the sticker mule mule sauce. So there's a company called sticker mule and they make stickers and they make like, they just like, you know, they take orders and you can, get stuff made by them but anyway they send hot sauce um when you have a, a a big order or something like that they'll send you like their hot sauce and it's so good it is so good uh highly recommend um but i, I would say i would say uh you know if you can get your hands on that hop singer mxpx or my career podcast hot sauce that that's the way to go right there if you're in california and you see liquid cartoon the really cool artwork you're, you're not going to go wrong with any kind of sauce you get from them and then um last but not least i would say uh, what is it um uh, i can't remember the name of it i'm just spacing on the name of it uh my buddy colin morrison has his own hot sauce through this company in california and um they're really good they're really really good somebody knows that's listening to this and they can call in and tell me what the what it's called um I've put it on my Instagram for sure. Uh, you know, Dexter from The Offspring has a hot sauce as well. It's really good. Uh, I got to say, it's very traditional, very much doesn't try to go outside the box. It's just a street hot sauce. It's just a street taco hot sauce straight up, and it's it's good. Um, all right. I think I did pretty well there. That, that's, what I, that's what I do, and, you know, you can add or take away whatever, and you know, I don't always have queso fresco. I don't always have tomatoes. I don't always have cilantro, but I almost always have hot sauce. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you can get, I can guarantee you that. All right. 
Uh, let's get into it again. Let's get into the next one. Hey, long-time listener, first-time first time caller. Um, I'm wondering, I was listening to the lyrics um, on the new snippet of the new song, and it's saying I'm not sure if I know anything quite Oh, it got uh, it got cut off. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I don't know what your question was, but uh, that song is called "Not Today," and now the album's out. I think that was from probably before the album was out. But uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure I know anything. I say I have to sing it to think of it. I'm not sure I know anything like I thought I knew before. I thought I understood myself thought i understood myself and the way it was before but not today yeah um i wonder if he was just asking me what that meant um i think it meant the world has changed so much that you just sometimes question your own self you sometimes question you know i was just talking to, to my wife about this earlier today i was like there's people out there on on social media posting videos saying i don't know if i'm real I don't know if I'm real. And, and these people are serious. And and then you start thinking about it and you're like, well, what if you're not real? What if I, I thought I was real, but then I thought a lot of other things too that didn't turn out to be true, right, over the years. Um, what if we're not real? And then, then it just, this you know cycle starts. But I guess my main point is is the world has changed a lot. And it's changed a lot in a short amount of time. And it feels like it changed at a slower pace back in the day. At least it felt slower. You know how they, they've, you've heard people say time is a construct. Time has variables. It's not, it's not just 1 to 12 or whatever it is you want to say, right? It's sometimes it goes fast. Sometimes it goes slow. And that is so weird. And it is so weird. And, and I think about it like when I think about my childhood and how certain things, like we just, like we went to Disneyland without cell phones, without smartphones. We, we went and waited in those lines without line genie or whatever that is that gets you all over the place. You know, we didn't have plaids back then. So um, random that I'm talking about. Disneyland, but I mean, I went to Disneyland as a kid. I haven't been there since I've been an adult, but, but I, I just know things have changed, you know, cause a lot of my friends have been there and they're talking about all the cool things that they have now and that you, and then, and then there's, there's other, you know, another one of my friends, uh, Neil, he says, I actually like waiting in line. It's kind of part of the magic of Disneyland. It's like what, what I remember from Disneyland, half of it from childhood was, waiting in line and one you're crazy you're crazy neil but uh i i get that because like whatever you whatever it takes to get a fix you know whatever that fix is of of the way th the way it felt the first time right the way thing the way anything feels the first time is not the way it feels the second third fourth fifth sixth seventh twentieth three hundred Fifth, five hundred, you know, like whatever. I don't know what we're talking about here, but whatever it is, it doesn't feel the same. Swinging a baseball bat doesn't feel the same after five hundred times versus your first time. And we all know what we're, we're really thinking about, right? But my point is, is the world has changed a lot, and I'm not quite sure I can even believe myself. And and, and you know, I'm not necessarily saying that to be absolutely purely literal no i'm it's a song <laughs> it's a song but uh but no i'm trying to portray a feeling you know we all feel that we all feel like and, and 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 this isn't a bad thing like i don't think that the fact that i don't understand myself and i realize i don't understand myself it's not a bad. It's not a bad thing. It's just part of growing up. It's part of living and growing as a person. And I was more sure of myself. I I feel like when I was when I you know ten years ago, 
I, I really, really thought I had it all figured out. And I think now, I think that lyric really is kind of just saying, I thought I had it figured out. I don't really have it figured out. I don't think we're ever going to have it figured out. Um, at least not today, right? So uh, thanks for your call. Sorry I got cut off. And uh, maybe you'll be a, do a second call at some point. Um, here's a, Let's go on to the next one. Hey, Mike. This is Jeremiah from Oklahoma. Um, first-time caller, long-time fan. I uh, just wanted to quickly say thank you for everything that you do and just for being part of so many of our lives for so long. I'm very excited about the new album and cannot wait for September 22nd. I already have my tickets to Fern Furnace Fest. Um, I had to set up a business trip to Birmingham sometime in 2023. So when I saw that you guys were headlining, I thought, well, there's no better weekend to go to Birmingham than the weekend of Friday the 22nd. Anyways, I hope yep. to get to hear some, some new songs played live. So my question uh, or topic, um, speaking of live shows, I've always been very interested to see how the band takes the stage. Um, it's like one of my favorite parts of any concert, especially in an MXPX show when you know, we've been traveling all day and standing in the line and waiting and just the anticipation is always a lot of fun, especially when the lights go down and just seeing how the band chooses to take the stage that night, like what media pieces they've incorporated, what songs they've chose to open up with, just all of that fun stuff. So, for example, um, my favorite intro that I've seen at an MXPX show was you guys walking out to Baba O'Reilly by The Who, and I know you've done that a few times, but... Um, you know, this particular time, you, you get the whole crowd jumping with you, and you guys are, you know, playing the song, and then you transition from that right into Cold and All Alone, and then when the drums kicked in, just the, the place just exploded, and it was just so fun. So anyways, um, would you mind talking about kind of what goes into opening an MXPX show? Um, you know, what media pieces have you enjoyed walking out to? What are some of the songs you like to choose to open the show up with? kind of the, the thought process behind setting an exciting atmosphere for the rest of the show. Um, do you have a particular favorite uh, combination in mind? Um, anything with that topic would be great to hear you talk about. Um, anyways, man, I hope that made sense. Uh, keep up the work. Um, I can't wait to see you guys on September 22nd, and we're just so excited for the new album. Talk to you later. Bye. Awesome. Thanks for calling in, Jeremiah. Um, just getting to this now, obviously we played Furnace Fest and it was awesome. I hope you had a great time. I hope your trip went well. Um, hope you approve of how we started the show. I'd love you to maybe call back in and give me your, your vibe. Um, this is a great question. I don't think I've ever really talked about this. We definitely thought about it a lot. We talk about it amongst ourselves a lot. Uh, opening a show is very important. Closing a show is very important. I remember... I remember realizing it was a very bad idea. We only we only opened with Punk Rock Show one time ever. One time ever. And it was not our own show. It was Social Distortion, Old 97s, and MXPX. And it might have been Dancehall Crashers. Maybe they played too. Uh, that's kind of a weird one. But no, I think it was, honestly, I think it was Social Distortion, MXPX, and Old 97s opened, and which is an awesome lineup. Uh, you know, at the time, I didn't really even know Old 97s, but I definitely do now. Um, anyway, we decided let's open with Punk Rock Show just because we never have before, and why not? We have a short set. Shorter set anyway. It was probably like a 45 minute set. And it was a disaster because one, people aren't ready to go nuts until you work them into being ready. And so I think that's why, Jeremiah, that's why intros are so important. Maybe that's why, you, you know, for us, they're, they're so important because it's, it's near impossible for us to get our crowd moving right at song one. It really takes something it takes me yelling at them let's go and then you know then it, and it dropping into the song like that like you said like with bob o'reilly it was like people just instantly wanted to jump it was great um you know and we we've done that over the years and we've brought it back 
already, you know, and, and we kind of feel like, you know, this is years ago we brought it back. But we feel like now, eh, maybe we'll bring it back again someday, but it's going to be a while. Like, we're kind of on to other things. We're on to different vibes. But um, a, a really great song to open with is something like My Life Story. Always was, was one of our openers for a long, long time. Um, whether or not we open it with something that goes into that or we just straight up, you know, Tom with those, dun, 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 dun. it just has a good opening track vibe. Also a great sound check song. Um, that's a song that like we all know what it sounds like in our heads, in our ears. And so, and it's got all backup vocals and everything. So we, we really know, okay, this is, it's sounding kind of right when we do a sound check. So my life story is a great opening number. Um, other songs that are great opening up Friday tonight. If it's a Friday night, I think, you know, now that we're off of the, the self-titled album, as far as like, it's not our latest thing, we'll still open with it on a Friday night, maybe, but not, not usually on, on nights that aren't Friday. Cause it's a little weird. We have done it, <laughs> but it's like, I wish this didn't say Friday so much for a Saturday night. Um, but it is what it is. It's a cool song, but uh, it, that's a great song to start start the set with um it really just gets people ready to sing it gets people engaged a lot of people love that song off the new record um and but we're not but like i said we're not gonna be opening with that anymore so we we opened with it for furnace fest because it was a friday night and it made sense to um but uh but this Coming up, we'll be, we'll be playing Saturday and Sunday. So we're going to start the set with a different song. A different song. And I think this song, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be just another one of those, okay, that's a good opening song. But it, I don't feel like it has to be an opening song. This, I mean, just like My Life Story doesn't have to be an opening song. Because right now we play My Life Story somewhere in the middle or towards the end of the set. Sometimes kind of even towards the beginning of the set, uh, like fourth, fifth, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, so I mean, a beginning song could be played anywhere, but I don't think any song could be played as an opener. That's that's my thing. And, and why? Like for all the reasons I said before, you have to sort of introduce how you're going to sound, what the sound of the, the band is going to be for the set. So your first song kind of introduces people to that sound and also what kind of set it's going to be. Is this going to be a nostalgia set? Is this going to be a modern set of music that they're doing now throughout their, you know, history, a mix set, you know? And, and so, you know, if you come out with, you know, when, when Green Day comes out with, with uh, Welcome to Paradise, that's a nostalgia set. That's how they, they, they open up a nostalgia set. And maybe they're not a good example because they have literally every song they have is like a hit song. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, if they were to come out with like um, American Idiot or something newer, that doesn't feel as nostalgia. That just feels like, okay, they're just, that's just a banger and they're coming out with it, that kind of thing. Um, but the further away you get from an album... I think, I think, you know, you, you kind of find what songs last and what songs fans really have kept listening to. Um, and for us, definitely Let's Ride off of the last record. Let's Ride is number one for sure by a landslide. And then from there, it's Friday Tonight. Friday Tonight and all of it. Um, and then from there, maybe Rolling Strong, but... For a, for a first track and how cool I think Rolling Strong is, it just got annihilated by Let's Ride. Let's Ride was still just a landslide, just bowling over all the other tracks were released on that last album. Um, and I feel like this album has been a little bit more even. Stay Up All Night, still definitely the most popular. But after that, Not Today. Not Today is, the sec I would say, the second most popular song on the album. Um, and from there, I don't know. I actually don't even know, <laughs> but, uh, probably like something like mountains to climb or, um, or 
Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, this is what you told me. I really like that song too. Um, anyway, that's we do put a lot of a lot of thought into those intros. So uh, great topic. Thanks for letting me ramble about it. Um, set lists are very important to us. Like how we put the set together, what order, and it's not always perfect. Like sometimes you just have to fit songs in, and so you just do it. But um, we really try to to put a lot of thought into that. All right, let's go on to another voicemail. Mike, hey, this is Tom from Omaha. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that uh, you uh, were my last pre-COVID show. Uh, I came from Omaha to Denver to see you and Five Iron Frenzy. Um, and uh, then my first uh, show after COVID was... Uh, in St. Louis with uh, Newfound Glory and Less Than Jake. So I can't think of a better way to bookend the crap that was COVID. Um, but anyway, uh, I have uh, two questions for actually a question and a second question with two parts. My first question is, how do you even begin to perform the logistical Tetris that it takes to uh, think about touring with Goldfinger and then mix that in with the uh, MXPX uh, when the time comes around. Uh, my second question is two parts. Um, uh, number one, do you think that uh, you will ever do another uh, uh, the, on the cover uh, album? Um, the second part being that uh, with the uh, it's not a question, it's more statements. Um, uh, it seems like the uh, pop punk covers have really proliferated in the last decade or so. Uh, with your two uh, cover albums, uh, New Con Glories, three uh, screen to stereo, uh, Reliant K did two uh, EPs, and then there's the entire volume of uh, Punk Goes Blank uh, recordings that I think uh, I know I enjoy. Uh, I have a cover band, and uh, uh, I performed uh, uh, your... Uh, version of uh, It Ain't Me Babe at my own wedding reception <laughs> uh, years ago. The marriage didn't work out, but uh, the uh, love for the music uh, did. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I, and, and uh, 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 Somebody to Love and Fallen Angel are just two fantastic cover versions of uh, pop-punk covers that, that I've heard in so many years. So, uh, uh, that's all. I uh, look forward to the new uh, album. I can't wait to order the vinyl and uh, hopefully see you on tour in the Omaha area. But again, I'm not uh, opposed to uh, driving out to Denver or St. Louis or Kansas City or wherever it takes me to see you guys. Thanks. Bye. Awesome. Thanks for calling in, Tom. I hope you make it to, to Denver because we're going to be there. And Five Iron Friends, it'll be there with us again. Uh, last time we played Denver, they didn't... I don't think they played with us last time. Uh, but but it's been a while, so we'll do it. Uh, thank you. Um, logistical Tetris, I love that. That's what this episode is going to be called. Um, the best thing that happened with, with Goldfinger was when they ended up firing their booking agent and hiring MXPX's booking agent. So we have the same agent... And we can kind of figure out what each other is doing a lot easier. And so I just, you know, although I still can't make every show because, I mean, priority is MXPX always. And if there's an, sometimes there's an MXPX show on the same weekend as, as a Goldfinger show. And it's happened this year, I think, already. Um, but I've still made uh, most of the shows this year. Um, that's the best way is just having our booking agent being the same and so that we know when the shows are we know when each other's shows are and we can kind of, all right, there, there, there. Um, and like I said, sometimes it can't be helped and you just do, you just do your thing. But like right now, I, I think I was just trying to figure out when I can go to my favorite pizza place. I like to go on Mondays. Um, and I can't always go Mondays because a lot of times MXPX is busy on Mondays. And the next couple Mondays, one we have practice and then the next Monday we're flying back home here from Vegas, and and then the next Monday, I think we're flying home from Jakarta, Indonesia, 
So, I mean, I, I might be home Monday night. So, like, I'm, I'm missing a lot of Mondays for a while. Um, so you're going to be hearing this podcast. I think it'll still be coming out for the most part, but it may not be coming out like clockwork as far as, like, on the times when it usually comes out. So I apologize for that, but at the same time, I guess I'm not really that sorry because it's because of these damn shows that you guys all love to come see. Um, that's the that's the, you know that's another logistical Tetris is how do I figure out the podcast while I'm doing all this traveling? Like I can definitely like do an episode here and there. It's not going to be the same. I'm not bringing all this stuff with me. So like if I do a podcast, I might just do it on my phone with video or something like that and just transfer the audio later. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, whew, all these questions that I shouldn't be asking you. Uh, I'm just really just thinking about it. But Tom, great question. And that's pretty much how we do it. Same booking agent. Um, on the cover, will there be another? I'm not going to say there isn't going to be another. There's definitely a bunch of songs I would love to play. Now, will there be another anytime soon? No, it ain't going to happen. We haven't started it. We haven't thought about it. All the, you know, it's just, I just wish there was more time in the day, more people, more people to work, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, great idea. Love doing covers. Love the, yeah, one of my favorite covers was Somebody to Love by Queen that we did on, on the cover too. And, uh, what a great song. Really, really glad that we were able to pull that off. Um, the latest cover we did, Unstoppable, by Planet Smashers, a band from Montreal, Canada. Great song. I think we added our mark to it. We made it def different enough to where it's definitely like a different, like a choice. <laughs> like depending on which song you listen to, it's a choice. But uh, both both are great versions, and I love the Crashers, uh, the Planet Smash, not the Crashers, the Smashers. Um, I do love the Crashers as well, the Dancehall Crashers, although they haven't they haven't come back yet. I know they will come back eventually, um, but they're not back yet. Um, all right, let's move on. Mike Herrera, this is Tom from Omaha. I left you a message last week, I think. Um, Another Tom from Omaha. Oh, same and, Tom. Uh, <laughs> today, on a random play on my car stereo, I had a moment of clarity where a light bulb went off and uh, I was talking about covers and this and that and I'm pretty sure I referenced a New Fountain Glory cover uh, when I was telling you something about uh, singing uh, It Ain't Me at my wedding. I know I got other covers right. Yeah. Guys, but uh, <laughs> it ain't me, I'm blaming man. it on driving so in the unlikely event that you actually <laughs> considered playing my message, uh, please note that, uh, at least for yourself, that I do recognize that uh, I uh, conflated uh, one pop punk cover. It happens. Uh, I'm terribly embarrassed. Uh, anyway, I, everything else I said in that email, or email uh, message, uh, I stand by. I can't wait for you guys to tour again, can't wait for the new album, etc. Et um, I just am horribly embarrassed about it. Conflation of that uh, that one song. Um, that's it. Yeah. Peace out. Thanks for calling in again and and correcting that for us. I did. I, I wasn't sure who did that cover of "It Ain't Me, Babe" because I was thinking Mike Ness, but that's probably that was "Don't Think Twice." Don't think twice. It's all right on his uh, on Mike Ness's solo record, um, "Cheating at Solitaire." I think that's the name of the record. Anyway, it ain't me, babe. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably Newfound Glory. Um, either way, was not me. Um, I have covered Dylan, but I don't think I've ever released a cover of Dylan. I, I've just done it live, and I've you know maybe done a video or two, but it's never released it. Um, more like, something you do just like to do. You just I'm playing this song, you know. Um, cool. Thanks, Tom. Let's do one more. One more voicemail we'll call it a day thank you guys so much for being part of this uh next week i have a guest on and then the week after that who the hell knows we'll see what happens but uh probably just do some music monday or 
or one of these, but it kind of depends. Like I said, I might be, I might just be doing it on a cell phone. Maybe I'll get Yuri or Tom or we'll get, we'll get some, some answers out of those guys. Um, here's your last voicemail. Thanks for calling in everybody. What up, Mike? It's Joe from St. Pete, Florida again. Um, just killing time waiting to get gas at Sam's Club, and it's a long line. And I just listened to the skateboard uh, podcast. Uh, just finished that, so I figured I'd give you a shout. Ordered the new uh, Insomnia variant with, this, with you guys' signature signing of it. And I just saw the YouTube of what the record looks like, so I'm stoked to see it and listen to it. And I also pre-ordered on uh, iTunes so I can listen to it at the gym as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I had a question on your design. Uh, who comes up with the designs? Is it... Do you guys create it as a band? Like, do you come up with the ideas? Or do you have, like, a creative team that comes up with the ideas for, like, vinyl art or uh, CD art or T-shirt art, clothing, whatever designs you guys come up with on the merch website? Um, how does that come to be? Uh, just curious because um, we've had a lot of really awesome designs over the years and poster designs and whatnot. Uh, so I was just curious about that. Uh, looking forward to getting the new vinyl next week and hearing all the new songs. Uh, you know, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I know you're staying super busy with all the pre-orders. Um, so just keep doing what you do. Uh, I know that all the hard work that you guys have done is paying off. So, uh, you know, just keep doing that. You know, like you uh, mentioned in the last podcast, two up-and-coming bands, you got to put in the work in order to see the success. So, uh, you know, that's an inspiration, uh, not only uh, just in music, but just in general. Uh, so, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, all right. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, man, that's a cool question. I mean, design. Who does the design? How does this stuff just appear? Who Who's doing this work? We have a team. We have a small team with MXPX, and we pretty much do everything. Everybody does everything a little bit. Um, on the merch side, my mom that manages and runs the merch store, she'll do some designing, but mostly mostly she'll put together designs that are already there and put them on things and make them happen. But like, she'll come up with like, say our PXPX design every year for our fan club. She'll, she'll do that. Um, and then for like the new album stuff for the designing of the, the vinyls and all the stuff for like for reissues, that all has to be meticulously designed and redesigned and re inputted into new templates and, uh, information has to be gathered proofreading all of this i mean so we have uh we have um mark woodbridge who is like i would say he's kind of like a record label type guy but he works for mxpx and he, he he does he does a lot of other stuff in the in the music business but um we hire him to just be part of our team and to like help us with that um obviously tom to chill on management and um sees a lot of, has a lot of the big vision with as well as me coming up with like coming up with like say the 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 new album artwork a lot of that was just tom and me talking about ideas for hours and hours and hours over you know months and then mark and i talking about it and then tom talking to mark tom talking to me like uh, so us three back and forth is really like the core of what needs to get done and then from there of course finding an artist um i found cole and uh told mark to like hit him up and and it turned out that he worked out as being like a really really perfect 
situation for us to to hire him to do not only the album artwork but just the artwork for everything you see like the whole new era of find a way home you know this backdrop he did the design for the backdrop and we just had it printed you know things like that so like even though oh that's the same artwork as the backdrop of the the album it's different because it doesn't have all the like extra things it's just one layer so like we would have him do just this or just this and send us that artwork so there's a lot of a lot of little meticulous pieces and and it's still happening you know with show announcements and different different little bits and pieces for videos and slides and it's a lot of work and but it's mainly mark and tom and myself and then mark working with with cole on the actual drawing drawing the actual artwork i i, I, th I think cole was was saying that his hand was hurting because he did the artwork for our, well, he did the artwork for everything you've seen lately for us, including our Seattle show, which is a poster of the gum wall, the Seattle gum wall. And there's gum all over this alleyway, gum alley. And like to draw all the little gums, he had to actually do that by hand. And um, I love that because it's just like this, this thing we build gets built with our hands, with our bare hands, people. And that to me just gives me chills. It makes me so happy. It makes me so proud to be part of this team. And, you know, when we when we have something close, I'll send it around to the band. I'll send it to Thomas Nesky, usually first. He's the one that's really like, he really cares about how things look, how things are going. Everybody else is just like, yeah, that's badass. And which is great because we all have different things that we have to do in our lives and, and they do get done. So, um, the role that, that I'm playing is is sometimes I'm right in the middle of everything and sometimes I'm like far, far from it. And and it changes on a project to project basis. Sometimes I'm directly involved every step of the way. Um for instance, music videos. I was I was involved in, in every single music video. Um pretty much every step of the way. Now um I doesn't mean I made all the decisions. No, no, of course not. But, but definitely them, the, you know, just like, what can we do here? What can we do here? It all stemmed from me because it was like, okay, let's can, w would you be willing to work with this, with us on this? And then I give them the idea. And then, then, then that more decisions can be made, but all the ideas are just, just coming out of here. And, and, you know, our team is, is, huge as far as like getting things done um there's so many things that I, so many little bits and pieces i wouldn't be able to finish on my own and so having mark around is great having tom around is great i mean on the show and brad it's it's just it's been it's been um, a transition because we've we've lost some team members over the last few years but then gained new ones and getting those new ones up to speed and like, okay, what were you here for? Were you here when we did that? No. Okay. Well, we need this document and we're, we need the sign in info for this website or whatever. Like, it's just, it's like, I'm sure companies go through this all the time, but like as a band, it's like wild. It's like wild that we, we live in the same world as, as everybody else in, in that respect, in the respect of business and what you have to, the hoops you have to jump through, getting insurance and this and that. I'm constantly having to like write down serial numbers and take pictures of serial numbers and strike off pieces of gear that we don't have anymore and put on new pieces of gear for the insurance and then put on a new railing because every time they come here every year, they find something new that was, even though nothing's changed from last year, now there's something that's a problem and they got to make me fix it. So like, wow, you know, uh, the design team's amazing though. <laughs> And I'm glad to have them. But the design team is a, is the whole team. It's like there's no like I said like in 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 most small businesses these days is like one person's doing five jobs and everybody's got five jobs. You don't just you don't just get to be the videographer or the marketing guy. Like you you got to do a lot more than that. So it's been working out. And thank you guys for being part of this journey, being part of this new era. Find a way home has been amazing. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already added it to your music library, whatever you listen on, go add MXPX. Find a way home. While we've been talking about all these covers, you can add those too. But honestly, all I care about is is the new album and our last album. 
because that's what we've been heavily invested in. We put all of our money into it. We put all our money into it for the last album and then spent it all on this album. So now all our money is into this new album. And if I sound like I'm constantly talking about it, it's because that's why. It's like literally our whole livelihood is in this album. And we're constantly putting more and more investment into shows, into vinyl pressing, into, you know, this new album marketing, telling people, plane tickets, travel. You know, we travel to L.A. on our own dime to go on podcasts, like to go on Joel, uh, Joel Madden's podcast uh, a few weeks ago, that kind of stuff. Like that is expensive. So when you guys go to mxpeaks.com MX and you buy the, the vinyl, like uh, Joe was just talking about, he bought the Insomnia vinyl, um, that helps us do all this and and we're just putting it right back into this band because this is what we do so i appreciate you guys uh no complaints here i don't say that to to say oh it's hard and blah 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 i just say that to say we're passionate about what we're doing we're passionate about this album we love this album we love these songs we can't wait to go out there and play them for you guys go see the mxp states uh with with the ataris if you can't make it out to the hollywood palladium in january or or the show box coming up at the end of the year in Seattle. Maybe you can make it out to an MXPX Atari show next year in 2024. Everything's on sale right now. Go check out mxpx.com to see the exact dates. And uh, please, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube, subscribe to MXPX YouTube. We're putting out a lot of videos on MXPX every Monday. Uh, just be part of that community. We'd love to see you there. We'd love to see you anywhere where you're not already. All right, because uh, we need you. We always have. We'll see you next time. Shout out to Bob McKnight. Thanks for producing. Thanks for editing. Thanks for holding it down. All right, you guys. Peace. Peace.